What's up guys, today I'd love to share with you three simple rules that allow you to get better at chess straight away because that reduces the amount of blunders that you have and also helps you find great moves that you wouldn't find otherwise. I'm Grandmaster Igor Smirnov and let's go ahead and get started. That's our first example, it is white to play. You may wish to think about this for a couple seconds yourself and pick a move that you would play if you are white. Now let's think about this together. So which moves do come to mind? Uh, we can see that... Like, first off, with God and Knight, maybe you want to grab this Rook. But secondly, which may, maybe looks even better, is the fact that you can play Queen H7 check. And that looks really nice, because you actually attack him. Our Knight supports the Queen, so the King has to move. Now we keep delivering checks. Our Knight takes away this square. The only square is here. And we can keep chasing the King. And it looks like you are nearly winning the game, because if the King goes back, you know, you're going to play a Rook H8. And it seems like a checkmate. But your opponent has something nasty. Do you see what, which move he is going to play here? He's going to play an illegal, nasty counter check. I'm saying illegal because normally in chess you cannot counter check. These are very rare situations when you can do this. And in this case, Vlad can play rook f7 all of a sudden. And you can't take it because your own king is in check. Which means that you have to move your king. And after this, he's going to be the one grabbing your queen. And you lose the game. Those situations happen all the time and they're really annoying because actually your position was very promising and indeed while I was winning you were about to win the game but just because of some miscalculation, one move that you didn't see, all of a sudden you turn this winning position into a loss. And that turns you into late Bobby Fischer when you start saying I hate chess, I don't want to play anymore. I hate chess, I hate chess. So how do you avoid that? Well, here's what you do. Before you even begin thinking about your own move, ask yourself the first question we're going to talk about is what does he want or she wants if, you know, you're playing against a woman. So the thing is, you want to recognize your opponent and realize what they're going to do so that you are aware. Right? So in this position, we already know that there is this potential discover check coming on the next move, and it's going to be really annoying. But I'd say that even without this thing, even if we forget about the queen for a second, like black probably wants to play a rook f2 check, and that also feels pretty annoying. So I'd say that either way, you got to be very careful. I'll play any move for white just to see the point, just to show you what I mean. So if let's say you want to play something and it's black to play. If black play rook f2, and again, even if we forget about the queen for a second, that's check from the rook. And if the king goes, you know, here or here, black will probably follow up with knight e2. So that's already quite dangerous. And either way, we, we do need to be aware of this. And that just goes to show that you really need to do something very quick, something very forcing, because if not, you're going to lose. Also, that will help you prevent the blunder of, you know, knight take f3, because if you don't pay attention to the queen, you might think that you just grabbed a rook. But in fact, no, because of the queen, they can play queen takes f3 and you're done. So that doesn't work either. What can you do? Well, we know that you need to play a force and move, right? Because otherwise rook f2 is coming, it's really deadly which reduces the amount of your candidate moves significantly. Like, there's maybe queen c4 check, one move that I can see. Uh, queen h7, we already know that it does not work. And the final check that I can see in the position is rook h8, and that actually is a check made in two moves. So king takes, here comes queen h7, and white wins. Now you may wish to practice what you've just learned. It is white to play. Once again, think about this position and how would you play here. It must be easier now because you already know the right question to ask yourself. And as a chess coach, I analyze games with my students regularly. And this situation, I'm not talking about this particular position, I'm just talking about the situation in general, happens over and over again. Like, people play something like, they notice that the queen, the king is very exposed, and they play something like h4, and then they tell me, oh, like, I thought the rook is gonna go, and after he goes, I'll play queen h5 mate. You know, and it's all nice. But the thing is, the rook is not just moving somewhere, it moves right here, right? Because there is a battery along the g-file and all of a sudden they're going after you and you're done. Because that's check, if the king moves somewhere, they're going to continue checking you and it's mate. And this is also a very annoying situation because your position was indeed great. You had this very strong knight on f6, you know, controlling so many squares in the position. Black's king is very exposed, indeed black is barely holding. And all you gotta do is just to notice that there is a counter threat. And if you ask yourself that question, what does he want? Or can he attack me? You will probably notice the move rook takes g2 coming. And you just need to do something against it. And there are a number of ways. Like, for example, queen takes c6, where you not only guard this pawn, but you also 
threaten some sort of discover checks and we got a totally winning position because black is paralyzed, they can barely do anything. We're moving on to the next example. This position uh, came from the Grunfeld defense, white played b3, black responded rook e8 and how would you play here if you're white? Think about this for a couple of seconds and then we'll discuss it. Now, of course, the vast majority of the players would probably play bishop to b2 because that was the point of the previous move, pawn to b3. And although it's a normal move, that misses the mark in this particular position. Now, here's what I recommend. After your opponent has played a move, ask yourself what has changed. Now, the simple question, what changed, allow you to track your opponent's moves and differences that it made in the position. Now, with rook to e8, what changed? Well, probably black wants to play e5, that I guess is the reason for playing rook e8, so that's one thing to notice. Which doesn't mean that you have to necessarily stop it, because e5 is not dangerous, your center is very well defended already. But nevertheless, just keeping track of his ideas is useful. Secondly, what changed? Is the fact that after rook to e8, this pawn on f7 is less defended. And for example, you can go with knight to g5 and already attack it. At least he won't be able to play e5 for sure, now he has to guard this pawn. So knight g5, possibly an interesting move, you can consider it. But also, thinking about this move knight g5 and this weakness, you can also think, hey, what if I take here and then play knight g5? And then you realize that after the king moves anywhere, you continue with knight e6 and all of a sudden the queen is trapped and you win the game. Asking yourself what changed after your opponent's move actually helps you in both ways. Because first, if let's say black played something else, black goes knight b6, and you ask yourself what changed. Sometimes it allows you to notice your opponent's threats. Because asking yourself that question makes you comprehend that, okay, the knight moved to a more forward square, and oh, by the way, it also attacks the bishop. Therefore, you don't blunder it. That's one thing. Or the other thing, just like in the example that we discussed, sometimes you notice opportunities, not threats, but opportunities, that your opponents move weak in something and you can take advantage of that. This time it's black to play, and as always you may think about this for a couple seconds and then we'll discuss it together. Now, the first thing that we can see here is that your king is in check, which means that you gotta do something about this. And the most natural reaction for black would be to just move the king. And here's what I recommend. In such positions, before playing a move, Ask yourself, what happens after my move? Like, what's going to happen after you play the move that you intend to play? Because there is this misconception that in order to be a great chess player, you have to be able to calculate and visualize variations for 50 moves ahead and that's how GMs play. And it's not true. In most cases in chess, it is enough to calculate for 2 or 3 moves ahead. And even calculating for just 1 move ahead, it already makes a big difference because you just avoid careless moves and blunders, right? So after King h8, or rather before playing this move King h8, ask yourself this question, what's gonna happen after that? If we move king to h8, by the way, one note here that we only care about dangerous moves, aggressive moves from your opponent. Because if he just moves back or defends something, that doesn't bother us. We don't have to think about it at all. Uh, we need to check his aggressive moves. And aggressive moves are usually checks, captures and attacking moves. Now, can white capture anything or deliver any check? I mean, he can take on f8, but then you just recapture. That's just an exchange that doesn't bother us. What else? Uh, maybe he can go knight f7 check and that actually can be unpleasant. At least we gotta think about this because it looks a little bit dangerous for sure. Is there anything else? There's also one more check, knight g6, which as computer tells us is a great move. <laughs> so you already know that it's a great one. Because after we take, white can play queen h3 and all of a sudden it's a checkmate on the next move. White can give up the bishop but it only delays mate for one move, so white wins. Hmm, that goes to show that king h8 was actually a big blunder. That would cause black a game and that leads to checkmate in three moves. Now, obviously it means that black's gotta do something else. And something else is a move b3. Now with b3, actually, not only we block the check, but also we attack the bishop. And now white's situation is quite tough because we attack the bishop as well as the knight. And they can't save the both pieces simultaneously, therefore you're gonna win material and win the game. For example, like what can they do if they trade on f8? You can take. Now they still end up with the same problem. They can deliver this one more check, but you've got a knight there, so you can trade off. And then you can pick up this handy knight on e5. Now you're up a piece and you have a much more active position. You can go bishop g5 going after the queen or bishop d6 and trying to checkmate here. Like, anyway, you're up material, you have much more active position and that's a completely winning position for black. 
And here is a little task for you. What if in this position, after rook takes f8, black took not with a rook but with a bishop? Is it irrelevant which one to use to recapture? Let's say if you take with a bishop. What's going to happen after that? Please think about this and write it down in comments below. Be careful, it is white to play. I don't flip the board because we think from our opponent's side, but it is white to move. With talk about certain frames of thinking, simple questions that you can ask yourself in order to find moves that you wouldn't find otherwise. And if you enjoyed and want to go deeper on this, I have a dedicated course called Level Up Your Chess, which contains different chapters dedicated to openings, middle game, end game, how to study chess effectively, how to avoid blunders. And my big promise with this course is that studying even one of these chapters will be enough to level up your chess and is proven by statistics from thousands of other students by now. So if you're interested, click the link below the video in the description and check it out. Either way, keep crushing it and have fun.